Hi, I'm Rod. Welcome back to the Orca Boat Shop. This will be the final episode in building the PT-11. In this episode, I'm just going to be painting the hull. I'm not going to show varnishing the inside and top sides. I've done that in many videos. So I'm glad that you all have enjoyed this series of building and uh, we look forward to the next project. The whole hull has been sanded with the orbital sander right down to 120 grit and then was skim coated with a skim coat of epoxy and let to cure. Now we're just uh, scuffing it up for uh, paint. close on the end of this build. So what I've done is I've masked off along the bulkheads, along the gunnels. I've sanded the heck out of this thing right up to 220 wet sand, washed it down with soap and water, cleaned it off with a clean rag, shaking the dust out, and now I'm just going to hit it up with a tack cloth but we're not pushing too hard because I don't want to leave the wax, the beeswax film and contaminate the surface so it's just a gentle rub and we're going to get to painting. Alright the owners chose an Interlux bright side off-white paint for the hull. I'll just open up the can and before we get paint all over the edge and all just going to pound a few nails, age old suggestion, so that paint can run back into the can when we pour it out into a tray. And then taking a good stir stick and very gently just circling back and forth. Paint cans when they're full, it's very difficult to stir without having it come all over the edges, but usually good paint, hasn't been on the shelf for too long, it is not settled that much. Although I have opened a few cans of paint over the years that I don't know what's happened to it. A big lump of clay on the bottom and three inches of oil on the top, making it almost impossible to liquefy back to paint. If there's lumps on the bottom, you kind of feel it, but usually you can check the bottom of the stick and if there's residue lumps stuck to it, then it still needs a bit more stirring. So I've got a brand new paint tray. We're going to splash a pile in there. Clean off the edge as best as possible. So with the holes, excess paint will just go right back into the can. So I am going to use a very small nap, the same rollers that we use for epoxy. It is much better to put on multiple thin layers of paint that will not sag or run than trying to put on mul or several layers of heavy paint, trying to fill the, fill the uh, color all at once. I will also do a bit of tipping off with the foam brush. So I really want to make sure the roller is fully saturated and I don't want to put on too much at once so I'll just kind of roll a little here and there. The roller can kind of splatter on you if you try to roll too fast. And we're going to need to take a brush to just get in the edges here. I'm just using a cheap disposable chip brush for now, but I'll use a much better brush as we get through the coats. This is just to get some paint on there. 
So any roller you use is going to leave some form of texture on there and also introduce air. Hence I'm just going to drag this foam brush through it. Kind of evens it out. First coat is not going to cover very well. But the main point is here, especially on this vertical surface, I do not want to see any runs, otherwise I'm going to have to leave it for several days before I would be able to sand it. With the bulkhead done, you just start to roll on a few areas here, just to get it off the roller. And then I can start to smooth it out. do is a bit of a section at a time and then tip off. Sometimes your foam brush gets pretty loaded and ends up depositing paint when it really should be actually smoothing it out and even taking paint off. So occasionally I'll just squish it out on the section I'm about to paint with the roller so that the foam brush is a little more effective at tipping off. You of course can tip off with a, a good brush, but uh, like many, I'm a little lazy at cleaning brushes. I mean, I will clean my good ones for varnish, but for just a, basically the primer or base coats of paint, it's hardly worth it. But I will, on the final coat, probably use my badger brush which doesn't really hold as the paint like a foam brush does Before getting not too far ahead, it's nice to come back and check if there's going to be any runs. They're likely to be off of a hard edge where the roller is squished off a bit excess epoxy on a, on a sharp edge or even the foam brush. So just coming around looking at it from all angles before getting too far ahead. All right, so this is just the uh, first coat. 24 hours later, second coat will go on in exactly the same process. And then I will lightly scuff sand between second and third coat just to get rid of any dust nubs and any little bits of runs and put on the final coat. Same process using a roller, but tipping off with a good badger hair brush. So I want to thank everyone for watching this uh, series of videos on building the PT-11. Certainly want to thank Russell Brown at Port Townsend Watercraft in Port Townsend, Washington for designing this lovely little nesting dinghy. It's been a pleasure to build and uh, 
The manual was very detailed, everything came together very well, no difficulties. So I'm not going to show the varnishing as I said earlier, I've done that in many videos. Um, all that's really left to do on this build is to attach the hardware and uh, send it off to the customer. Over the years of producing these videos, uh, many uh, followers have requested interest in the Orca Boats logo. So I do produce it on uh, uh, cloth hats with a Velcro adjustable strap on the back and the company logo in three colors is fully stitched on the front. So you can purchase those on my Orca Boats uh, store at orcaboats.ca. So thank you very much for watching. Next up in the shop is completing a 16 foot prospector canoe cedar strip. I did a series of videos a year or so ago, ended up just uh, getting so busy that I stopped the filming. I needed to get the boat finished for the customer, but I have another one here. We're going to finish up that series of videos. So jump over to the series of videos on Cedar Strip Canoe Building and follow along with Orca Boats. Thank you very much for watching.